Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So today, I wanted to discuss a bit of a better method where you could locally host the PlayStation 5 exploit files for right around $4. Now, typically what we do is we come in here to networking and then advanced settings, and we put in this IP address for a primary DNS. From there, we typically go back and we may go to the user guide user guide, user guide again, and then we get this host uh, right here. So we'll hit yes there. And then from here, what we'll typically do is we'll do the L2 button two times and then come up here to a URL redirector and we'll punch in one of the other host that has the PlayStation 5 exploits on it. But what if I told you that you could have a completely offline scenario running on its own individual hardware as an access point and never have to deal with any of these hosts or have to deal with any of these DNS settings that we've been doing for quite some time now? Now, obviously, there's some benefits to using some of these other hosts, meaning that they keep them completely updated. But if you're like me, and maybe you have two PlayStation 5s, or maybe one PlayStation 5, or heck, maybe zero PlayStation 5s, you might want to host these files locally, where you don't have to ever be dependent upon one of these hosts staying up. So what happens, for example, if those DNS settings that we put in, or we typically put in in our network settings, what happens if they decide to turn off that server? Well, how are you going to jailbreak your PlayStation 5? It's the same if any of these hosts that are currently out there go away. Now, remember, I hope that you plan on keeping your PlayStation 5 for years and years to come, but these hosts in these DNS settings may not survive the test of time. So you should locally host them, and that's exactly what we're going to do in this video today. So let's go ahead and let's jump straight into it. Okay, and so while you can have a completely software-related solution, it does mean that you need to kind of keep that server up and going. The solution that I'm I'm talking about here is basically wherever you keep your PlayStation 5, as long as you're able to plug this device in or a device like it into a USB power outlet, then basically you'll have an access point that you can reach at all times. Again, this is a great scenario if you want to be 100% offline and never, ever, ever have to worry about updates ever again. Okay, so in order to host the files, again, we need a device. Now, the device that I chose was just simply this D1 Mini or this ESP8266. And if you're asking me, Michael, why did you pick this board? Well, I had this board left over from a previous video that I did back in February 2022. Now that we know that we're going to be using this D1 mini board, you may be wondering where can you get it? So this board, as long with the other ESP32 boards, they run about $4 on AliExpress. Now you can buy these on Amazon if you would like something to kind of come in a little bit quicker. But basically, these boards are available absolutely everywhere. Another reason that I picked this kind of D1 Mini was because it had four megabytes of flash baked on it, which means that that is more than enough to host the exploit files. Now that you know which board that you can get, you also are going to need to download some software. So you can come right over here to Arduino and download the Arduino IDE. So 2.00 is the latest version of it. Again, this works with Windows, Linux, or Mac operating system. Next up, you are going to need to download the files for the ESP8266. But basically, this is a project right here that is designed to create a Wi-Fi HTTP server and a DNS server. So the ESP8266 server will redirect the user guide and to the internal HTTP 
HTTP index page. So again, it says that this is just a basic server to host the files from Spectre Dev's 4.03 kernel exploit. And here are the settings, which we'll walk through the settings together in just a moment. But what you will want to do is to come up here to code and then select download zip. And one other thing to keep in mind is that while I am discussing the 8266 today in this video, you can come back over here and if you scroll down, you can see here is the ESP32 device, if you've got one of those, as well as here is a Pico W. So now that that's being said, let's jump in to the software part of it. Okay, so once you get the zip files downloaded, I've just placed them in this same folder right here. You'll first want to take your PS5 server main and then just extract it. And it should look just like this. And then for your Arduino nightly windows, again, just right click and extract it. And what you'll have is this folder. And if you go into it, you will eventually find a executable called arduino.exe and then just double click on it. Okay, and so once it loads, you're gonna to want to go up to file and then open. And then I'm gonna go into the PS5 server main, PS5 server main, and then PS5 server. And we're going to select the PS5 underscore server dot INO and then press the open button. Okay, so now head up to file and then go down to preferences here and where it says additional board manager URL. If there's already one in that, that's okay. Just go ahead and remove it out and then paste this one in right here. Now, again, I will put a link to this in the description where you don't have to type this out. Once you do that, go ahead and press the OK button here. Now we're gonna go up to tools and then we're going to go to board and then we're gonna go to board manager. And from here, I'm just going to type in a W and an E here. And you should see this one right here, which is ESP8266. And we do want to leave the latest version on here. So now just go ahead and press install. Okay, so it takes a few minutes to download all of the files that's needed for all of the various types of boards that is currently out there for the ESP8266. Okay, perfect. So now it does say that it has been installed. So we're going to hit close here. And now we're going to go back up to tools and then board. And then we have ESP8266 boards. So if we scroll down here, we can see that there is the Lalan Westmos D1, R2, and Mini. So we're going to select that one. Okay, and so now we just need to compare and make sure that we are using the same sort of settings. Now keep in mind, this is for the D1 Mini Pro, so there's only a few little differences here between the one that we're using. But we'll go ahead and we'll cover those now. So we're going to go to Tools here. And so for the board, that is the correct board that we had. The upload speed matches. The CPU frequency, we're gonna change that to 160 megahertz because that was what was located right here. Let's go back to tools again. For the flash size, again, this one is only four megabytes, so we do not wanna change that to 16. For the debug port, we're gonna put disabled. Debug level is also set to none. The IWIP variant, it does say V2 higher bandwidth, so we're going to select that one. And for the V tables, it's set to flash. And for exceptions, we just have those set to disabled. It does say legacy there on his, but exceptions, we could just leave this one right here as disabled. And then for erase flash, only sketch. And then for SSL support, all SSL ciphers, which you will need to make sure that that is correct right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's verify that we do have the correct configuration. So we're gonna press this button right here, which is just verify. So it does state right here that it is compiling the sketch. Okay, and so at this point, 
it does say that it is done compiling and there is no errors in here. Okay, so now we need to upload this to our device. So here is my setup. I basically have my D1 Mini connected via micro USB cable and it's just plugged directly into my dock. So you'll want to do the same with your device and keep in mind, you do not have to hold any sort of buttons or anything like that in order to write to this board. Now back over in Arduino, we're gonna select this option right here which says upload. And it may say this right here that the serial port is not detected retry the upload with another serial port. And so if you go to your device manager and then you look over here on ports, you may be able to tell which port it is. And at least in my experience, that's how I've been able to find it. So I can see right here on USB serial is detected over here on COM3. So I know that this is plugged in via a USB cable. So I'm going to take COM3 and then press OK. OK. So at this point, it is writing to that little device. Okay, 100%. Let's take a look at some of the code in here. So if we scroll down into this just a little bit, what we can see is, is that there is going to be an access point that is called PS5 Web AP, and it's going to have a password of just password. And if we scroll down into this, you can just basically see that all of the HTML files, the CSS, the JavaScript files, etc., are just going to be handled in this little mini server that we are running. And if you wanted to change any of this content, then you absolutely could. Maybe PS5 Web AP doesn't sound cool enough to you. Maybe you want your own different SSID name, so you could change that here if you wanted to. And do keep in mind that the DNS is going to simply be this 10.1.1.1. Now that we've got the code running the web server and the DNS server on our D1 Mini, now we need to actually upload the web files. We're going to need to add this plugin. So simply come over to this page and go to the releases right here. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to click right here on this zip file. Okay, so let's now use that zip file. So we're going to go to files here and then we're going to go to preferences. And so right here is where my sketchbook is located. So I'm just going to copy that out. And from here, I'm just going to create a new folder and that's just going to be called tools. I'm going to go into the tools here. Okay, and so here is that zip file and I'm going to just simply drag all of the contents of that zip right over here into my tools folder. So at this point, let's go ahead and let's close out of Arduino and let's open it back up again. So we'll go close here and let's go ahead and reload that project, which was PS5 server. And now we can go to tools here and we should see finally ESP8266 sketch data upload. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, you can come over here to sketch and then there is this show sketch folder. And now once this opens up, everything that's inside of this folder right here called data, these are the files that it's going to upload. So as we can see right here, we have an index.html as well as all of the different exploit files. So that's again, just a little bit more information in case you wanted to know it. So again, we're going to tools and then we're going to ESP8266 sketch data upload. And then down at the bottom, again, you will need to be connected via USB but here it will say it's uploading files and we are back at 100%. Okay, so that is it. We are done with the computer side of things. Let's now switch over to the PlayStation 5. Okay, so we're going into network and then we're going to settings and then set up an internet connection. And what do we see right there? 
we see a PS5 underscore web underscore AP. So let's press X to connect to it. Now I have connected to this one already. So at this point, you would have needed to have added in your password. Again, that password is just password. And so once you connect, you will see this can't connect to the internet. And well, that is exactly what we want. This is a very isolated environment that is only running on that little tiny device. So now let's go into options here and let's go to advanced settings. And then for the primary DNS, we will need to have that set for 10.1.1.1. Once that is all complete, just go ahead and press OK here. And again, you will get your failed message here in a moment. Again, that is perfectly fine. And keep in mind that now there is absolutely no way you can download a system update for the PlayStation 5. So now let's head back and let's go to user guide, user guide, user guide again. And there it is, 1.02. And note, you did not have to deal with the SSL certificate warnings because the code takes care of all of that. So now we could just hit OK here. And we have a completely 100% offline PlayStation 5 exploit for just around $4. So now if we wanted to take this console out into the absolute middle of nowhere, we don't have to be dependent on anybody's DNS or anybody's host server. We're completely disconnected. Give this video a like or a thumbs up. I really do appreciate each and every one of you for watching. This one took me a little bit of time to kind of figure out all of the things, so a like would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.